Hi, my name is Josh and I've been a professional teacher in New South Wales for the last five years. The purpose of this video is to help you understand the professional development requirements for proficient teachers. For teachers who want to become proficient, check my videos below titled Journey to Accreditation. This video will specifically address the policy, the recent policy changes from the New South Wales Department of Education at the tag end of 2020 and how it affects you. Welcome and let's begin. So many of you might remember at the end of 2020, there was a bit of a shock to everyone when, with an announcement that came out of the blue that basically said to all professional development providers that registration with NASA would be rejected immediately and that they were invited to apply for accreditation. This also confused teachers, as many had used the PD providers and it remained unclear as what could be kept and what would be rejected. Let's go back in time. In July 2020, the Minister of Education asked NESA to review their process for registering professional development courses for teachers in New South Wales. Following the review, in November 2020, the Minister announced a new accreditation for professional development courses policy, which required professional development that is accredited by NESA to meet their criteria and focus on priority areas. In December 2020, the policy was updated and applicable to us. Quick recap of December 2020. There are four things. First, professional development, aka PD providers, had to register their courses before. Now they must be accredited by NESA. Second, teacher identified PD had been replaced by elective PD. Third, PD re requirements remain similar to the previous requirements. The same minimum amount of, of 100 hours and at least 50 hours must be NESA registered or now NESA, NESA accredited PD. Fourth, transition arrangements for teachers was introduced. We'll go through those four things now. To simply put it, we must swap out registered for accredited. NESA accredited PD replaces NESA registered PD. This doesn't affect us too much in terms of what we were doing before. It did affect PD providers since they had to have their courses accredited with NESA in order to operate. We still have to do the same number of PD hours. We still must do the same professional development that we would always have been doing. But this just made it a little bit easier for NESA to be able to keep track of the PD as it aligned with their goals. Teachers should know that the courses that they, that they are taking are the best available and to assure this, NESA accredited PD meets criteria and focuses on priority areas. NESA reviews and accredits all NESA accredited PD courses. To have courses accredited, the provider must be a bona fide provider or be an authorised provider, which includes the Department of Education, Catholic Schools New South Wales, the Archdiocese and Diocese of New South Wales, and the Association of Independent Schools for New South Wales. NESA has four priority areas and is keen to develop us as the workforce. First, we must consider why they want these priority areas to be our focus as teachers. Everything that we do already meets, or should meet, these priority areas. The job requires us to be able to focus on a wide range of knowledge and interpersonal skills. However, while we have a wide range of knowledge, we do need to ensure that they are tied into something that is meaningful and effective. The first one is the delivery and assessment of the New South Wales curriculum and early years learning framework as applicable. This is the core part of our daily work. The second is student child mental health. This isn't just about ensuring our children or our students are learning in a safe environment, but to help enhance their mental well-being and academic success in tandem. Third, students and, students and children with disability encompassing physical, psychological and cognitive disabilities, this priority is to focus on making our classroom more equi equitable for all children and students. And fourth, Aboriginal education and supporting Aboriginal students and children. This should be seen as, a rec this sh this should be seen as more than a recognition of country and include an understanding and sensitivity of the history, culture and engagement with the, with the education sector. Moving on from the NESA accredited PD, let's talk about elective PD. This is where a lot of us have gotten confused and I'd like to straighten it out for everybody. 
Elective PD replaces what we used to call Teacher Identified PD, or TPID. The idea is meant to be flexible, so then you can align whatever professional goal you have for yourself to the standards. It includes activities or courses you complete in or outside of your school or service that contribute to your ongoing professional learning. So what are the main attributes you have to keep in mind when selecting an elective PD? One. Elective PD needs to meet the standards. I'll link a previous video here for you to learn more about the standards for proficient teachers. Two, elective PD has to be selected from a list of approved activities. And three, it must meet at least three out of five elective PD criteria. These attributes are all captured in the NASA ETAM system. I'll be explaining more of ETAMs in the next video. Let's have a look at the list of approved activities. Elective PD covers a wide range of things you might want to pursue. Additional PD can involve you choosing to focus on priority areas. Integrating ICT means anything that involves computers or the internet. You can do Microsoft tutorials, Apple software tutorials, and maybe even Adobe tutorials. You might focus on improving and integrating ICT into your lesson. Integrating ICT is definitely a more technical area to pursue. Legislative requirements can involve areas of the law, policy, or procedure you want to do more training in. Ethics and responsibilities involves you pursuing your own professional development that you think enhances your understanding of the teacher in relation to the ethical conduct and your responsibilities. Just a note, this is covered yearly as part of our child protection awareness and training, as well as the corruption prevention training. Mentoring and coaching PD, either to mentor your colleague or, or to mentor your students. This is particularly useful if you are put onto a school sport that you are unfamiliar with and need to learn coaching or sport techniques as part of your job. Educational leadership PD might be for those wanting to build up their knowledge for positions of leadership within the school. Any further study that you've decided to take on that relates directly to your job as a teacher in the school context. That can be TAFE or university courses, but can also be in courses related to the languages. Any PD that you think will enhance your professional commitment. This is particularly useful for those returning teachers who may have already gained valuable professional knowledge outside of the school context and how it might be integrated into the school and into the community. So, you're ready to choose your elective PD and there are some things you need to keep in mind. There are five criteria that are available to you. You need to decide if the PD you were chosen had met a minimum of three of them. Elective PD must enhance your teaching practice. There is a trap where we as teachers are already pressed for time and decide to do a Mickey Mouse course or, a, or tick a box to collect the hours. Try and not do this. What you decide to do should be with the goal of enhancing your teaching practice. It should relate to improving student child outcomes. These outcomes can be found in the curriculum and the syllabus. Elective PD can provide for collaboration, transference and application. This means that the PD you have chosen can be shared or demonstrated with colleagues at school. Elective PD might be in response to feedback and reflection on your teaching profession by a fellow teacher or supervisor. They may have identified an area that needs improvement and you have decided to act on that. Another very important criteria, in my opinion, is that your, the PD that you have chosen is research and evidence-based. And you are pursuing PD that, in your professional judgment, has merit. A good rule of thumb is that anything older than five years should be scrutinised. Our profession is constantly changing, as is the pedagogy. We don't want to waste our time on ineffective PD. Remember when I was talking about the requirements for NASA accredited PD and elective PD? This is where we break down the hours. The key number is that there must be 100 hours of PD completed in a maintenance cycle. That sounds like a lot, but considering a typical maintenance period for a full-time staff is 5 years, that's 20 hours a year. Casual teachers have 7 years in a cycle, breaking that down to 14 hours a year. That's more or less in line with the comparable industry standards. Of the 100 hours, at least 50 hours have to be a necessary accredited PD. The rest is made up of elective PD. Now, because of all the muck around with the policy back in December 2020, NASA has recognised that there needs to be a transition period. 
Some people worried that they would lose their hours. Some worried whether the courses they did complete would no longer be accepted. This isn't the case. All completed and logged NETSA registered PD and teacher identified PD courses in ETAMS before NETSA released the December 2020 update will count towards teachers 100 hours of PD. Then it gets a little bit more complicated. And this is where we must have a quick chat about your current maintenance cycle. Everyone will have a different due date. The key date is 29 November 2020. Imagine you are really living 29 November 2020. Look at your maintenance record and check when this period ends and the next period starts. By the time you are watching this video, has the period already ended? If it has already ended, that means you are already in that next period. And from now on, you have to comply with all the new requirements outlined in the December 2020 policy update. You can pretty much ignore the next few minutes of me talking. Other than people who are already in the next cycle, for everyone else, you are still in the current cycle as of 29 November 2020. Now look at what you've already completed. Everything that's already logged on before December 2020 update, that's your existing NASA registered PD and your existing teacher identified PD, they will count, so rest assured. Then we look at the remaining hours. If you decide to complete your 100 hours of PD in 2021, which is completing all the remaining hours of your 100 hours PD in 2021. Regardless of when your maintenance is due, you will have met your PD requirements. And according to the transition arrangement, these PD can be made up of any NESA accredited PD or elective PD. This pretty much means that if you decide to finish all of your 100 hours in 2021, the 50 hours accredited rule doesn't apply to you anymore for the current maintenance period. They can all be elective PD, as long as you complete them in 2021. Just a note, the elective PD has to meet the previously mentioned criteria. Obviously, to support your professional growth, you should continue to undertake PD where appropriate. Now we'll look at the transition arrangements for the proficient teachers with maintenance due in 2021. If you have not completed your 100 hours of PD, your remaining PD hours completed and logged will need to meet the elected PD criteria. You are encouraged to complete NASA accredited PD as it becomes available. If your maintenance is due from 2022, your requirements are different. If you, if you have not completed your 100 hours of PD by the start of 2022, you will need to meet the following, following requirements. Complete a minimum of one NESA accredited PD course in a priority area. Any remaining PD hours completed and logged will need to meet the elective PD criteria. So basically, everything you've already logged still counts and elective PD criteria came into effect immediately and then there is some wriggle room for the 50 hours accredited PD for your current maintenance period. Let's go through two scenarios to help us understand this a little bit better. Scenario 1. Your maintenance period ends on October 2021. You finish 70 hours of PD before the December 2020 update. Whether it's registered or teacher identified, doesn't matter. All your remaining 30 hours need to meet and only need to meet the new elected PD criteria. You don't have to do the accredited PD. Scenario two. Your maintenance period ends on October 22 or 2023, works the same. You finish 70 hours of PD before December 2020 update. Again, whether it's registered or teacher identified, doesn't matter. You have 30 hours remaining and you have two options. Option one, you complete the 30 hours in 2021 and these 30 hours can be elected PD. Option two, you complete some of the remaining hours after 2021, say in 2022. Then you have to complete at least one NESA accredited course in a priority area. The rest can be elective. It sounds a little bit confusing, but essentially in the transition period, there are some grace for NESA with our PD. As long as we've done as much as we can in good faith, NESA will recognize it as is. In an upcoming video, I'll explain how this all works in ETAMS and the new PD requirements. Everything that you can view in ETAMS so far is accurate, accurate and more importantly, accepted by NESA as valid, so you don't lose anything. So, let's summarize. 
NASA accredited PD replaces NASA registered PD. This PD meets criteria and focuses on priority areas. You will be able to search for them in your NASA online account. Elected PD replaces teacher identified PD. This PD is flexible so you can align PD to your goals and to the standards. Elected PD needs to fit into the approved list of acti activities and meet criteria. Transition arrangements apply to your current maintenance period. Visit NASA website for more information, including scenarios that will help you understand how the transition arrangements affect you. So, hopefully that explains everything you need to know about NASA and professional development for now. In the next video, we'll explore how to navigate and upload your elected PD hours to NASA. I promise you it will be very easy. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you soon.